Alright, I want to show you that every single day people are attacking the gospel of Jesus Christ, once saved, always saved. Now I want to show you one particular video, and uh, I'll let him talk first and then uh, let you develop your own thoughts. So in this video, we're going to explain why once saved, always saved, a.k.a. Eternal security, a.k.a. perseverance of the saints, is a false teaching. And I want to make this blatantly clear because this is one of the most uh, mainstream false doctrines in all of Christianity or quote-unquote Christianity today, especially Americanized Christianity. With all the popular preachers and televangelists and whoever else that's getting fame and stardom from supposedly being a Christian. Now let's get into this. Jesus' own teachings contradict this heavily. Let's get into Mark 9, verse 43. And it says, Jesus said, and if that, now, he's talking to his disciples. Right before that, John answered him saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name. So, Jesus is talking to his disciples. And he tells them, if thy hand offend thee. Now, if you read the NIV, um, it says, causes you to sin. And that's what offend means. So give thy hand defend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. Where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thy eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God. Quote, I want you to hear that. Kingdom of God, because there's false teaching out there that the kingdom of God doesn't really mean heaven. But anyway, the kingdom of God with one eye, than having two eyes to be cast into hellfire. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Alright? That's the truth. Now that's what Jesus says right there. I'm also going to take you really quickly, and this is going to be a whole series, Lord willing, into Luke chapter 12. And I want you to take a look at this right here, verse 43. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Of a truth I say unto you, that he will make him ru ruler over all that he hath. But and if that servant say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his okay, coming. Okay, all right, so let, let me just stop right there because you go back here and he's talking about um, if your hand offends thee, cut it off. If your eye offends thee, cut it off. You'll notice this guy has two hands and two eyes. Um, you see his, let's see, you can see his left hand here, right there. And then you go back a little bit and you can see his right hand. Okay, so he's got two hands, and of course he's got two eyes. And so we have to assume that he does not sin at all. And then, of course, if he doesn't sin at all, then he is perfect. And if he's perfect, then he's God. And believe me, he's not God. All right. And so um, what this teaching that Jesus is teaching here this is true absolutely true but what he's showing you is that you cannot save yourself all right you cannot and so therefore you need a savior all right because you can't do these things and you won't do these things nobody not even this guy will cut off his right hand to prevent himself from sinning he won't pluck out his eye to prevent himself from sinning all right he needs a savior i need a savior you need a savior the good news is we got a savior and it's the lord Jesus Christ all right so the law does not save anybody okay so 
if you could cut off your hands and your eyes, pluck out your eyes, and be saved, then Christ is dead in vain. So I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. All right, so this idea of cutting off your hands, plucking out your eyes, he's not doing it, but he's telling you that you should do it in order to be saved. Now, Jesus is saying this to show you that you need a Savior, just as Moses showed us that we need a Savior. The law is our schoolmaster to bring us to faith, to show us that we need a Savior because we cannot do it ourselves. All right. So, I mean, this is one of the stupidest things I've ever seen on YouTube. Somebody suggesting that you cut off your hand and or pluck out your eye in order to be saved. It's unimaginable how somebody could be that stupid. But there are a whole lot of people out there that are that stupid. And he's one of them. It's interesting, you see these young kids standing in front of a camera pretending to be Christian and preaching things in the Bible that they do not understand because they do not have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and what he has done for all of us. All right, so let's go to video number two. This will only be a couple of seconds here. If I can find it. Let's see this gal right here. I'm going to go, I think, skip ahead just a little Make bit. Make sure that you are always going to the teacher, okay? To Jesus, and he will teach you everything that you need to know, okay? So do not believe when they tell you that once saved, always saved, okay? It says in the word that those who endure will be saved. Okay, again, and just complete it is it it is the idiotic idiocy. All right, I mean this is just dumber than dog do. It's unbelievable, really, because yeah, you see this mentioned a couple times in the book of Matthew that. Um, but he that endures to the end shall be saved. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. In both instances, it's talking about people being saved all the way until the end of the world. All right, and then that's another reason why we're taught or told to go and preach the gospel to every creature. All right, and it even says, and this gospel must be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come now if all you had to do was endure to the end then everything Jesus did was in vain just stay alive just I mean according to the these kids all you have to do is stay alive until the end and you're gonna be saved so you don't even have to believe in Jesus. And, and then not only that, everything Jesus did was in vain. All right, so just complete stupidity, All right? Now let me show you one, the last one here, the very first, the latest and greatest. All right, and then let me try to find a portion Chapter here. Three. This know also. Let's go in the last to. Days, perilous time shall let's come. go right here. For men shall be. Them, which means to stop doing them. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. I am the vine. All right, so hold on. I got back a little bit. God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every one that nameth the name, we must not cover our sin. All right, there it is. 
We must not cover our sins. He's saying we must not cover our sins. We must not cover our sins. We must repent of them, which means to stop doing them. Alright, so if that's all it was required to be saved, then Jesus Christ died in vain. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Alright, so let's let's uh, take a look at this here. I already pulled it up so I wouldn't have to find it. Now I still gotta find it. Alright, so we're gonna go to Proverbs. He that covers his sins shall not prosper. But whosoever or whoso confess his and forsakes them shall have mercy. Okay, first of all, notice he that covers his sins. So that's you covering your sins. All right, you shall not prosper. This is not about salvation. This is about prospering in this world, in this life. Okay. Now, he wants to apply that to salvation, and this is not about salvation, and not only that, this is about you covering your sins, and that has absolutely nothing to do with salvation. All right, let's go to Romans 4, verse 7 saying blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered and how are our sins covered they are covered by the blood of Jesus he's died for all of our sins not ours only but for the sins of the whole world when we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ we are forgiven all right, our sins are covered. You don't cover your sins. He covers your sins. This is simple, basic stuff, but you got these kids teaching falsely, and it's incredible. When you do not have faith, you do not have understanding. And if you've seen any, any of my previous videos, I talk about that constantly, even today. When Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the, now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Uh, we got freedom. Okay. Now, when you do not have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you won't have any understanding whether it's of the gospel or whether it's of the Bible itself and you see these guys constantly reading right to you exactly what the Bible says and then they you notice you see them they lack understanding because they do not have faith it's that simple it's about faith man and it's always been about faith I want to show one verse. I'll close it out. Where are we at? There it is. Right there. And you see me quote this all the time. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world, and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. This goes all the way back, all right? It's always been about faith.